Welcome to Municipal Affairs, the show dedicated to delving deep into the matters that shape municipalities across Canada. Today, we delve into a matter of profound significance, one that touches the hearts and homes of many Albertans, the housing challenges faced by our seniors and community members across the province. For over a half a century, the Alberta Seniors and Community Housing Association, or ASCHA, has been a steadfast advocate working tirelessly on behalf of its members who are the backbone of diverse housing options available to Albertans. Today, we are honoured to shine a spotlight on the crucial role this organization plays in addressing the housing needs of our seniors and many Albertans. Alberta Seniors and Community Housing Association is a member-driven association that stands as a beacon of excellence in education, best practices, and resource provisions. With a mission to empower housing providers to offer the very best support, ASCHA has emerged as a vital force representing approximately 75% of the senior housing sector in the province of Alberta. But the story does not end there. ASCHA is actively engaging and broadening its scope to better represent the needs of the province's community housing organizations, ensuring a more comprehensive and inclusive approach to the housing advocacy. Now, in the realm of seniors housing, ASCHA's members serve approximately 40,000 seniors throughout the province, delivering care in independent, supportive, and designated supportive living spaces. This association proudly champions all sectors of seniors housing, from public to private and voluntary providers. And when it comes to community housing, ASCHA's influence extends even further, supporting over 20,000 households throughout public and nonprofit options. It is a multifaceted effort, reflected a commitment to housing solutions that cater to a broad spectrum of needs. But this is not a solo endeavor. This organization extends its reach by actively engaging associations and stakeholders, creating a collaborative ecosystem where their contributions enhance the very fabric of housing throughout innovative products and services. Now, today, in a very special episode, we are sitting down with Alberta Seniors and Community Housing Association's Executive Director, Irene martin Lindsay to unravel the intricacies of ASCHA's journey, explore its roles, challenges, and most importantly, how it continues to enrich the lives of countless Albertans throughout a steadfast dedication to providing the very best housing experiences. This is Municipal Affairs. Irene, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciated. I want to start with sort of an overarching question, but it's an important one to get to the meat and potatoes of what the interview is going to be about. And I want to start with, can you give me, my listeners and my viewers, an overview of what the Alberta Seniors and Community Housing Association does within the province of Alberta? You know, absolutely. So we have the privilege of of really representing and serving the providers of the full spectrum of seniors housing from a pure seniors apartment all the way up to de to you know designated you know um you know supportive living which is the highest level of housing with supports um before long term care and because we know there's a multiple range of seniors housing options um you know that those that are just uh, accommodation only those with you know service options and those with service options and health supports so that has been that was the primary focus of our association for about 55 years and then what we found is many of our members who were delivering on the public seniors housing side of the business, because in seniors housing, we represent the full market, non-market, deeply subsidized, and, you know, you know, and the uh, full market options was our, you know, public sector members were delivering all housing, including community housing, rent supplement programs. So in 2020, you know, 20, we added community housing to our mandate and now represent the full housing continuum from 
um, deep subsidy housing units for families, for individuals, along with other non-market options, and even some of the mixed market that is that is in the marketplace. So we represent the housing providers, help them be successful uh, with education, resources, research, and of course, some advocacy uh, with you know all levels of government and in partnership with some of the allied organizations. Now, from what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong here, your organization represents about 75% of all senior housing sector in the province of Alberta. Now, you just listed a very diverse range of housing organizations that you uh, work with and support. How does your organization work with that such of a range of diverse uh, uh, organizations to deliver adequate housing and seniors housing across the province? Because I'm assuming the issues in Medicine Hat are not going to be the same in Wood Buffalo. The issues in Peace River are not going to be the same in Okotoks. So how does your organization work with the diverse sort of groups to ensure a cohesive message and a cohesive uh, standard across? Across the province? Well, we have a number of member task forces. It's like we have an a, a affordable housing task force, and then we have one that focuses um, on the you know seniors housing more on the higher levels of support side. And that really helps us filter it out. And for example, on our affordable housing task force, we have representatives from both um, Alberta municipalities and the rural municipalities of Alberta, because we know that we need all levels of government involved in solving some of those issues. Um, we also, um, it it is a complex mandate, but we're, what do I say? I always say we're like a giant filter. So we, you know, listen to everything the members are saying and we funnel it down to what is the root cause of that. And we focus on trying to address the root cause. So, so what is the root cause? And I, I'm, I'm going to sort of uh, poke the bear a little bit in this question. But uh, as we have uh, most of our listeners, most of our viewers are from a municipal standpoint, we focus more on the municipal aspect. You just talked about Alberta municipalities and the rural municipalities of Alberta. What is the root cause that is facing seniors and community housing in 2023 that's potentially going to spill over to 2024? Yeah, and I'm going to answer that in two parts. For the, there's a, we 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 were you know we just partnered with a big report um, on the community housing affordability you know housing side, and El, Alberta has the lowest um, per capita affordable housing um, of any other province in you know Canada, and that root cause is really subsidized housing wasn't really um, a priority of governments, nor was maintaining the old stock. So there wasn't a continued reinvestment in consideration of population and economic growth. And so when, 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 when not, when, when the federal government devolved the responsibilities to the province and the province was really saying no you know it's going to take care of itself as well and then the municipalities are this isn't my role either you can see what we had is the sort of perfect perfect storm perfect storm yeah and now we need to come together. And I mean, our members want to be a part of the solution. They know the challenges in their communities, you know, and, and they work with their you know, with their municipalities. We know the challenges, but we cannot do it without, um, without the support of all levels of government. And on the seniors housing side, there's been, it's it's been very difficult with a, um, system that's very focused on um, a, a medical model and and not necessarily supporting people in a way that really focuses on their wellness. There's a shift to stay at home, but there wasn't enough home care to do that. And home in a in a congregate living has such better health outcomes because you've got nutrition, socialization, and fun as well, which doesn't happen when you're just at home by yourself. So it's, we didn't, 
it's hard for the medical system to look at a holistic model. So I think what we need is a community supports approach to all populations. And what supports do we need to keep people housed? We don't have a fail safe in our system. If you lose your job, you can't find another one. If you're a family, there's, there's, there's no net. There's no way to keep the, the funds rolling in. If you do qualify for unemployment insurance, it's usually not enough to cover your bills. So you can see that the whole issue of housing, whether you're a family or whether you're a senior, if you didn't save enough and or, you, or you're too worried about having enough money to get you through the rest of your life. I mean, those are the real fundamental pieces that we haven't thought through. Um, I'm going to ask a very sensitive question right now, and I apologize to do this right off sort of within about five minutes of the interview, but um, housing has become more and more unaffordable for a lot of Canadians and a lot of Albertans. We're seeing uh, the prices of housing go up organizations like yours are godsend for a lot of uh, community, uh, for a lot of Albertans and a lot of uh, people who are struggling right now. The demand that your organization and the organizations that you work with across this province are seeing it firsthand. Um, is Alberta prepared for the future if we continue to go down this path that we currently are on when it uh, around affordable community housing, seniors housing, that people can achieve and get into those sort of housings that are potentially affordable and smaller than a traditional white picket fence, 1950 style house. And that was a fairly broad question. Um, I, I believe that in order for Alberta to be prepared, they need to invest. What we have uh, seen is the if 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 they can increase the community housing stock, it would greatly um, increase the you know GDP. Any dollar invested in affordable housing would contribute the the stats are from the Canadian Mental Health Association that every ten dollars spent on social housing saves twenty two dollars in other areas of government spend. And right now, I think. Um, housing providers have have not been uh, appropriately funded with the increasing inflationary costs. So we need the government needs to step up and support their partners um, who are their you know delivery arm. And on the seniors housing side, I mean, 80% of continuing care, so supportive living, designated supportive living and home care are already have been delivered by private sector for decades. But with the the workforce challenges and agency fees, um, the the cost of capital and interest rates, those contracts are also not sufficient to meet the needs of the people that we're taking care of. So we need to look at the models and we need to right size them. I think throughout the pandemic, we 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 all knew that the government was struggling financially. We all did what we could, but there's no low hanging fruit left. So it it is going to require investment that's long term, that's sustainable and planned. Because in order to meet the demand when you're when you're building or if you're acquiring, it, that that's also a big option. Is if we can acquire some buildings and turn them into something affordable. Because in some communities, you you can hire people, but they have nowhere to live. So we're we're really in an interesting situation that's going to require multiple levers. So what levers are you looking at in 2024 to start pulling? Because uh, you're working with not only all levels of government, I'm, but I'm assuming stakeholders across this province. So what levers are you particularly looking for? And I know that's a, another broad question, but I think it's an important one. What levers are you looking at specifically to pull in 2024 to ensure a variety of housing options are available? Well, what we're hoping for is a um, one is, you know, like access to a stable capital 
tool for either acquisitions or um, starting to build because it takes time and 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 we're and we're already way behind. <laughs> we also need to focus on maintaining the stock that we do have. Um, there was an announcement um, made recently, and it's a great start, but. Because it's been on the back burner for so long, it's accumulated to the point where it's going to require significant investment because we can't take anything offline. Um, so those are some. I also think we need to work, you know, creatively with the federal government. I mean, maybe maybe there's a way that that they would, you know, wildly exempt all. Uh, affordable housing providers of carbon tax uh there's uh we the other proposal we recently put in is um to implement a um uh, a, a seniors transition tax credit so perhaps seniors over the age of 75 could purchase um you know housekeeping and meal services and get a tax credit for it and get some resources to do that it would put the power in the hands of the senior and allow them to stay in the community where they want to be. Right. So there's, there's, those are some of the levers. Um, the other one I mentioned earlier is certainly we need to appropriately support um, the, the housing providers that are doing good work. The other piece is, um, you know, tenant support workers, Albertans are struggling to navigate the right supports, whether it's mental health, whether it's, um, you know, personal care services, whether whether it's connection to the right ap application or funding program or services, we, we need to set people up for success. And our other uh, lever is the, um, is, is to, you know, focus on making home care more accessible and at a 24-7 basis, not just for scheduled care that would save the uh, acute care system and, and the hospitals a fortune. You've openly said that we're starting from a behind the starting line in some sense here. What would get us to the starting line? What would get us to a point where we can say we are comfortable with the supply and demand that we currently have, that we can start working towards the future instead of trying to play with 2020 numbers in a 2023 reality? So for Alberta, the report that we just partnered with that was released last Monday, um, Alberta needs 43,800 units by 2030. We've got six years. Six years. Uh, it's when you look at that at three or four hundred thousand dollars a unit on a new build. Um, you know, depending on the type of unit, it's tremendous amount of money. And usually, the average rent of a of an individual who's in social housing um, is it really depends where you are. Is they're only paying about three hundred. $50, $380 per month. The cost is $613. So you can't make a mortgage payment on that. So yeah. you can see that we need, we need for the deep subsidy, we need, we will need government investment. So and go ahead. Yeah. And the 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 one thing I really wanted to highlight too is we've been waiting um for the as part of the Stronger Foundations uh, review, the um, the you know report, it's the ten year strategy for housing, is to review the launch program. And the launch program is a partnership between the municipalities and the province that only exists in Alberta. It does not exist in any other province. And what we've been seeing is that the lodge assistance program grant that the province pays, has stayed the same since 2018 and the municipal requisitions are rising significantly to the point where many municipalities are saying we can't. And, and I mean, there's only one taxpayer and how do we figure out that partnership? Many of those are also built in the late 50s or early 60s. And uh, those are those are some of the or those are some of the pieces we've you know talked about with our municipal leaders. Um, and they they don't know how to replace their buildings because there isn't sufficient funding for it. And there is one third grants available. But how do you get the other two thirds? 
so and you're what, serving the lower income seniors. What what can municipalities do today to help sort of start this conversation? Because this is not a one government, as you've said, a one government issue. This is in all levels. All people need to get to the table and have this conversation. Municipalities, though, are fe feeling the blunt brunt of this issue because they are the ones who are the government of proximity they're the ones local they're the ones who are uh in the grocery stores with the seniors with the people who are trying to access these types of housings what can municipalities do today is there programs that ascha has that works in partnership with municipalities to advocate with the federal government and the provincial government to sort of get that two-thirds of that funding to start to help alleviate some of the issues that the current lodging is facing We've been very much streamlining our advocacy messages with Alberta municipalities and RMA, and reviewing our res, you know, our you know resolutions. And we're 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 also very much looking at um, grants in place of taxes, so that municipalities can continue to have the support they need to deliver municipal services while supporting housing. And maybe what they can do is look at what kind of land might be best available. There's lots of ways that they can partner um, and, and advocate with us on those points. I know we've been very, the resources we have, we've been doing, and maybe we need to do them every year. We've been doing housing 101 sessions after each municipal election with the with the municipal elected officials so that everybody starts to get some more growing knowledge of the of housing and all the housing programs the challenge is is it's complex because most housing programs were created at a political time and each one has a bit of a different funding model and a nuance because you know one might have been created in the early 90s one might have been from the 70s so they all have a different nuance and who approves the budget and what's allowed under this program. So we we try to provide all the tools because many of the municipal elected officials sit on the housing management body boards and it's a tremendous governing responsibility um, to do that. So we try to help them with tools, resources, webinars, education, and uh, you know target you know sessions for them at our conference as well. Um, there's there's a lot of uh, talk in the municipal world around housing right now and the challenges and the infrastructure that comes with housing. Now, I can imagine you're looking at just the housing aspect of this issue in its core itself as the executive director of ASCHA. I just want to keep on making sure I get the acronym right here every time I look up. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, sorry. Um have have you had constructive conversations with the provincial government? Because you have to deal with all three levels. You have to work with all three levels. Uh, Minister Nixon, uh, I believe in you, uh, your organization had a great uh, press conference earlier this month. Uh, what are you looking for from the provincial government? Because we talked about the municipal side. What about from the provincial side? Because they're the ones who sort of have the purses to what the municipalities can and can't do. So yeah. what do you hope to advocate from your own standpoint without talking about the municipalities? Well, we've, um, we, we had an, uh, you know, MLA breakfast last week and sort of those, those same as those eight, um, those eight levers that I think they need to commit to. Those are also really calls to action for funding support. We're just finalizing our, our pre-budget submission to try to articulate what the volume of that is going to be. And I, and I think we know that the government isn't gonna be able to do everything at once and it's multi-pronged. So we have a minister Nixon who's got the whole housing portfolio along with the, um, you know, the Emma seniors piece, and those are all tied in. I mean, the seniors piece also has a supplementary uh, accommodation benefit for the designated support of living. And the, and the support of living and the lodge program is licensed by L, L, you know, Alberta Health. And the whole continuing care piece is also in transformation with the new act coming into play 
in you know April. So we see opportunity for every government to pay attention and focus and come together. We need we need municipal affairs at the table. We need the health minister. We need the you know um, you know Minister Nixon as the housing minister to come and solve some of this because the housing policy, if you look at it from even an income you know, testing uh, uh, approach and what the responsibility is of the Albertan is also not consistent across the ministry. So I'm very excited that housing is a priority and that the care and supports are a priority. And I'm hopeful that we're going to finally address some of the key issues that have been in our way of really delivering what Albertans need from an affordability and a support perspective. What role does the private sector play in this solution as well? Because we talk about the public sector, which is a very important aspect, but there is a private endeavor in here as well that the private sector has to come to the table because your organization deals with some of the private organizations out there as well. What role does the private sector have to play in sort of addressing these issues as well? Well, in the seniors living space, particularly, the private sector plays a really, really critical role. And you might not know, it wasn't until 1999 when the launch program started, um, um, you know, prioritizing low-income seniors that the private sector came in and filled a big, big spot of the gaps. And it offered a really viable choice um, to seniors as how they wanted to live and where. They also are a tremendous partner to delivering designated supportive living in beautiful, beautiful residences at the same standard for the same accommodation rate that they would get in a public or a private sector or, or a not-for-profit sector space. So um, the the private sector is um, fulfilling a, a big role and they've also taught us um, a lot about uh, we have many national providers that have really learned great, you know, how to meet the needs of seniors really well and put the and have the person direct the choice and what they need. So we need choice, just like I drive a Kia, you might not drive a Kia, and that's okay, right? So um, those are the things. And in the in in the affordable housing space, we also have a number of of providers who can do some of the below market and do some of the below market, but they're probably not the right fit for the deep subsidy, you know, community housing that is required in in that space because it's, there are no margins at all, even you're in the minus position. So the only other piece that we've talked about with other provinces is seeing if private developers could build a certain amount of housing that is affordable um, within their, you know, developments. And and I think that's worth exploring and looking at so that developers and all of us are trying to solve this crisis. So you bring up a good question and I wasn't going to ask this, but you, you, you approach the subject. So I want to play in it for a bit, if you don't mind. Um, you, you speak with, I'm assuming, other provincial organizations across this province. Are the issues that are facing Alberta the similar to what you're hearing from your different organizations across Canada? Or are is what Alberta is facing with this sort of uh, 43,000 uh, uh, sort of deficit in uh, housing unique to Alberta and sort of the challenges that Alberta is facing right now on the seniors and community housing file? Well, on the on the community housing side, I would suggest it's quite common. Uh, we're part of the Canadian Alliance of Nonprofit Housing Associations, and 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 so Alberta has twenty units for every thousand per capita of affordable housing, and the average across Canada, I believe, is twenty three. So we're we we have work to do to just get up to the national the average. average on that space. So so we're in a little bit and 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 there's some interesting pieces of um how uh, it actually drives Alberta's economy if we would invest in that space more than other provinces if you take a look at the economic impact uh, study that was produced um in partnership with us but by the Canadian Housing and Renewal Association um who we are also members of. 
On the seniors living side, we have the Lodge program, which is the best kept secret in Canada. Affordable, supportive living for seniors really isn't something that exists in other provinces. So our landscape in the seniors living world is a little bit different. A lot of other provinces focused on more long-term care as opposed to as opposed to more supportive living. Alberta has a lot more supportive living and we have a lot more options where it's contracted health services coming in versus pure private pay. So Alberta has a, it's a great place to live and age well, but I think with the demographics that are coming, we need to do a little bit better at the home and community supports piece to strengthen that and the seniors tax credit might be a way to do that. I appreciate your candor there. Um, I, I, traditionally, uh, or uh, how do I word this correctly without sounding like a complete fool, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Traditionally, governments focus on where the people are and not where people are living. Uh, if there's a large population at Edmonton, Calgary, Medicine Hat, you will see more money for housing, for seniors housing, for lodge programs, for even community housing in those larger urban centers. But the reality is that people do live in rural Alberta as well. How important is it for your organization to advocate not just for the urban side of housing, but from the rural perspective. Because when you go talk to a senior in, uh, let's say, Starland County, they're going to say, I want to stay here. I don't want to have to go to Red Deer to go live in a community that I didn't raise my family in. It's extremely important. In, in our noble cause, we really believe that all Albertans need to be able to live well with all the supports in their community of choice. And I mean, for example, the lodge program, 70% of lodges are in rural Alberta. Mm -hmm. And, and, but what's happened in the, 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 the piece of rural communities that's become challenging in our conversations with municipal leaders is that some of the supports leave. So if you've got a lodge in a, in a great community that was full and many, many people lived there and were incredibly happy and well served, now don't have doctors, they don't have nurses um, coming in. So there's been a lot of work to build. I'm sure you've interviewed a ton of people on getting a rural health care in, but those supports are important, particularly as you age. And even for some some of the folks that might have trouble affording housing in the big city, whether they're on age or if they're on a you know disability pension, to move them out to a rural community where there's nothing is difficult. So we need to think about what makes sense. We need to work on transportation. We need to look at the holistic view of view of housing and the wraparound supports to make it viable for people to live well in those communities. And so if communities can really focus on those pieces, it's going to help. But the reality is we, we, we don't have that holistic approach right now. So in the short term, what do, what does your organization have to do to sort of keep people in their community while understanding that the reality is people may not be able to live in those communities because of, like you said, transportation issues, affordability issues, housing issues. Well, and that's the piece that's really being done by housing providers in the community. In, in, in a lot of the rural communities, our members are the largest employer. Uh, you know, you go to Flair, you go to the lodge, you've got most of the folks there and the people there reach out. They, they help you fill out the forms that you need and get you the supports that you need. And so those are, and so we, and then we keep the resources and the information coming to our members so they can do that in the community because you don't know what you don't know and you don't know what services you don't have or people come in, they apply for housing and they declare their income and you're like, wait a minute, you're missing out on this income and that income. And so I mean, we're if if we can position ourselves a bit as this, you know, support hub and support municipalities in that, we need to pull together and make that happen. You talk about being the support lever in some sense for the organizations that are on the ground in a lot of these communities. Um, I, I, I I lived up in Slave Lake. I know there they are some housing organizations up there, and they are wonderful. 
But the issue is the communication part, because most people don't understand that people can apply for these long-term cares. What is the communication aspect around communicating to the general public that these resources are there? These resources are available for people. Yet again, they may not be available for you today or tomorrow, but if you want to start looking at them, here's where you can go and find information on what's local in your community. So that way you don't have to look at other going into a larger urban center. You can stay where you are. Well, for um, uh, seniors housing, we do have an online seniors housing directory on our website, um, and it lists the, all the housing in your community, so you can see what's there. And just a point of clarification, so we don't do long-term care, and for long-term care, you are placed there by the health system. So, oh, sorry, I, I shouldn't um, have said long-term yeah, care. It was just, because it's a no, joint okay. venture in long-term and seniors yeah, housing. It's a, it was a double, and I apologize. <laughs> But I would, we, it's really funny because as you know, for the seniors piece specifically, I think um, everybody has an opportunity to see what's out there and make some choice to say, hey, well, if I, if, if I'm struggling with some of the basic things in my home, what are my options and going out and visiting and checking it out. Um, we find that most people talk to their friends and if Mary goes there or Bob, goes there then they'll maybe take a visit maybe have lunch or do something but but it really I think people are incredibly surprised when they realize what it is like because it's not a medical institution it is home and and uh, and and those are the pieces that really need that's the way we need to frame it and we need to have different conversations about it and we need people to think about when they can't take care of themselves anymore what are they going to do nobody wants to think about it we all want to just drift away in our sleep in our lazy boy but it doesn't always work that way um we we spent most of our conversation so far talking about uh, seniors housing, but I want to sort of uh, poke the uh, community housing side a little bit, if you don't mind. Um, what is the definition of a community house in Alberta in 2023? Because what I'm thinking is probably not what the definition is. So, we use the term community housing and really what community housing is, is it's for us, it's, 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 it's anything that's non-market, anything that's below market. And there's a full range because it could mean that you have affordable housing that's between 10 and 20% below market because of a funding pool that was available at that point in time. And you're required to be affordable housing for 20 years. It could mean deeply subsidized where you pay 30% of your income um, as rent geared to income. Um, and that's sort of the deep subsidy. It also means rent supplement. I can be living in a private place and getting um, my rent subsidized through that program. There's a, there's a, there's a, a combination of programs there. There's private landlord rent supplement. There's temporary, um, you know, you know um, a rental supplement. So it's really that whole breadth of non-market where there is a focus on serving those who are beyond their core housing need. There's a lot of conversation right now around affordability, the inflationary uh, issues that uh, people are facing. Uh, and I can imagine, and I, I don't want to assume, but I'm going to imagine that organizations that deal with the community housing side of the uh, of your uh, of your organization are probably overwhelmed right now and probably seeing a higher than average request rate or uh, uh, sort of intake, I should say. Um, is that true? And when did you sort of start seeing this sort of change in request for access to community housing in Alberta? I would suggest really in the last year, we start to see the wait lists grow and grow and grow and grow. Um, we've been, and 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 certainly the volume of growth for a, a affordable housing has been greater in the large urban centers, but it's also growing in the smaller communities like, um, you know, Pinoca or those communities because there is no more 
private rental either. So there's so there's no stock to rent for any price, and the what is available nobody's moving because there's nowhere to move to. So we've got a we've got a double compounding issue um, on on the on the horizon. So the wait lists are going up. Um, and so you you couldn't even just put a rent supplement in because there isn't enough rental stock. And um, I, it was Build Alberta that had the numbers on um, the amount of, of uh, you know, there is rental housing being built more than there has been in decades, but it's not fast enough for the growth when you think about um, all of the the growth. I mean, more people have migrated to Alberta, or you know, migrated or or immigrated, and they're coming here, and we aren't able to keep up with housing supply. So it's a supply problem, and it's an affordable a an affordability problem. Because when supply runs out, the price goes up, like anything. So how does your organization work in that reality? Because I can imagine the wait list is continuously going to increase until the housing market changes. And we see municipalities, even here in Calgary, which, where I'm based, is trying to work towards it. But a solution in 2023 is not going to fix the, the issue in 2023. It's going to fix the issue in 2025, 2026, 2030, potentially even. So how how do we help Albertans access these organizations, access these community housing in 2023 when the supply just isn't there? Well, I'm I'm thinking about Calgary specifically, and I know they have a big gathering in Calgary today to try to ad, ad, address just that very issue. And I mean, I think we need to look at the land that's uh, available and see what can be done in a quicker way. May, maybe there's an option for some you know modulars to get us through uh, some some i i do think we need to look at every possible option and be creative because it, and we need to we need to act fast and we need to stay the course we can't think we fixed one thing and stop because that's what got us here in the first place um, so I, I love that 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 last statement that you just said. You can't just assume that you fixed it and just walk away because that's what got us here. And it's true. It's what's got us here. But on this show, we always look towards the future and we always look towards what is going to happen next because let's give some silver lining here, Irene, if we can, because I don't want well, this to be all doom and gloom because I don't think it is. What is the benefit? What is what is good going on in Alberta Seniors and Community Housing Association today, end of 2023, that's going to spill over into 2024 to make this issue sort of hopefully get better, but at the same time, make sure that municipalities, the federal government and the provincial government come to the table finally and address this issue seriously? Well, I mean, to me, the most positive part of all of it is that we have housing you know providers that work tirelessly every day to try to solve this problem within their communities whether they're in calgary whether they're in slave lake whether they're in medicine hat or whether they're in in uh, you know castor i mean it, it's it's a big 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 issue and so i do think that the solutions aren't going to be the same in every community because the problems aren't the same in every community. So I, I, uh, what's great is that housing is a priority and providing the right care to the people in the right place is also a priority. And so with that, we're really seeing that there is opportunity to create solutions and ways for Albertans to get the services, supports, housing they need in their budget is our goal. And so I see more hope than I've seen in, in uh, you know, 10 or 15 years about this actually moving the dial on it. So that's my silver lining and what's keeping the members, the team and I going to in this these really tough and challenging times. 
what's on the agenda for 2024 as the organization while the advocacy works there, but what do you see from an organizational standpoint that you can improve on to make sure some of these things happen? Well, what we are working on a couple of things are certainly um, looking at getting a group of thought leaders together from developers, from everyone together. We've already started this work with Minister Nixon and his team and, uh, you know, um, working towards pulling together a housing symposium for those solutions. And that's in addition to our Home for Housing um, a conference and trade show that's in our that's in Calgary in March. So we are working with our task forces on solutions. We have ongoing dialogue with government. We have great relationships. And we also um, work closely with Alberta municipalities and and with you know, RMA um, to help support you know, meeting these challenges. Now, we, we've we been chatting for roughly about 40 minutes now, and I can imagine we have just, if not even scratched the surface on this issue, but, but I know you are a busy person, so I, I want to ask sort of a very generic overarching question. What else do you want my listeners and viewers to know about your organization, about the issues that you're, uh, the Alberta is facing right now, and what we can do to help solve these issues together? Well, I think that making us aware of any of the ideas that you've got or the problems that you've got, and we might have the resources to help support, or it might be a new idea that could solve some situations for other communities across the province. I think we just want everybody to know that we're here to solve this problem together. And we need all community leaders, all levels of government to solve this problem. Where can people find out more information and give you a contact if they're looking at potentially getting involved and potentially learning a little bit more that we haven't talked about? We are easy to find at asha.com. And uh, that's our, you know, website and our, you know, emails. We're all there. I'm in, here. Here now I can't talk at the very end. I'm Irene at asha.com. It's really easy to find us. And um, we we need community solutions and even regional solutions and to come together to make it work and right across all the ministries, um, remove the silos. Exactly. Especially in 2024, we should not be in silos anymore. We should be working as a one cohesive province. Um, for those who are wanting to learn more, the links to Asha's website will be in the show notes. So scroll down. If you're watching this on YouTube, click on the links, learn a little bit more, get in contact, learn a bit more about the Alberta Seniors and Community Housing Association uh, from them directly because their website is very informative. I, I, I did a very, really deep dive into the website and i feel like i came out the other side going i hopefully can remember half the stuff i've read because it is so informative and they have so much resources for people uh also the link to uh irene's email address will be there as well for those who are looking to reach out to irene in the province of alberta to learn more or potentially figure out how they can help find some solutions to the housing crisis and the seniors and community housing uh, challenges that the province is facing. Irene, it is always a pleasure. Uh, well, I shouldn't say always because it's our first time, but it's a pleasure to sit down with you and chat with you. I'm assuming this will not be our only conversation that we have. We will probably be chatting over the month, uh, over the year of 2024. So thank you so much for taking time out of your busy December and sitting down and having this conversation with me. Well, thank you, Chris. And I look forward to more conversations too. It's been great to get to know you. And that's all for today's special episode of Municipal Affairs. We'd like to extend our heartfelt gratitude for all of those who have tuned in and watched this episode. Your support means the world to us. Remember, our mission is to bring you the most important municipal stories from across Canada, and we can't do it without you. So please keep those stories coming, share your municipal news, concerns, and even triumphs with us. Your engagement is what fuels our passion for shedding lights onto the issues that truly matter in our communities. Your voices are essential, and we're here to amplify them. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking. Thank you.